Hello folks, welcome back to the Homestead Skill of the Month Club. This is kind of an extra tucked in right at the end of our month on old-fashioned cooking. In the spirit of talking about tools of old-fashioned cooking, Nick and I are both together going to show you our cast iron cookware and talk a little bit about how we take care of it and where it came from. A lot of people who, who use cast iron are not just cast iron lovers, they're kind of cast iron fanatics. I suppose I probably tend a little bit in that direction. We really appreciate our cast iron for lots of reasons. One, it's a, a product that improves with age rather than getting worse with age. If you treat it well, you don't have to replace it ever because it continues to get better and better as you use it correctly. There, there's nothing better than a tool that, that lasts a long, long time maybe even passed from generation to generation. Fits well with the simple living and homestead ethic. It's also just a great tool. Cast iron is, if seasoned correctly, is a non-stick surface. Also, if you have a heavy bottom cast iron pan, it can heat very evenly and it will hold heat, which is great for Dutch oven cooking or just keeping your gravy warm on the way to the table. Um, we have several sizes of cast iron pans. Um, that are on, our, on the top of our stove most of the time. And they've actually come from different places. I've heard a little bit of debate about whether it's better to get the old cast iron or the current, current cast iron. We have some of each and we have found that it works. It all works. So this is really actually iron and it's actually cast. This technology has been around for a long time. Cast iron would have been used to cook over open flame a couple hundred years ago, either in a, a hanging pot uh, hanging cast iron pot or sometimes there would be a, a spider um, a cast iron pot with three legs which would be set down in the coals of a fire. Once uh, stove tops came into common use then uh, a skillet was developed for use on top of the stove and that is what we use. What we have here is a size zero skillet. This is the smallest size we know of um, made by Wagner which is one of the two cast iron making companies from the first half of the 20th century. Um, and this was passed down to us by Nick's grandmother. So this is um, an example of, of a tool that gets better with age and can be uh, kept and used across generations. Our size nine skillet is one that we use all the time. Now this one is labeled Good Health, but I think it's also either from Wagner or Griswold, which were the two companies making cast iron in the beginning of the early 20th century because um, we got this one on eBay. Um, and I don't think it's a lodge um, cast iron piece, which is what's being uh, made now. I think it's older than that. This one isn't our absolute favorite because it's a little bit thinner but it's such a convenient size and also it's nice that it's thinner because you can lift it with one hand. So this is also an essential piece. This is our biggest cast iron. This is a size 12 and this one is in constant use as well. Quite a bit heavier. You'll see people telling you how to season cast iron and that what's going on here is that liquid oils are being hardened into um, a, a, a solid which is a little bit shiny and very slick so that creates a non-stick surface on your pan. In order to get the oils to turn hard you need to bring them to their smoke point and different oils have different smoke points. I've been told that the best oils to use to season cast iron pans are vegetable oils, plant-based oils. But people would have used lard in prior generations so whatever fat you have as long as you are bringing it up to the smoke point it's going to harden for you. You also want, however, to keep that surface nice and smooth. So some form of a scraper is useful for that. We bought this, this thin metal spatula with rounded corners at a thrift store or some other very cheap place a long time ago. And then when the handle broke off, we still wanted this sp thin metal spatula with the rounded corners because um, it helps us to keep our um, our skillet's nice and smooth. If you've seen a tutorial on how to season cast iron, they probably told you to preheat your oven up to 400 degrees and smear your oil all over your pan and then put it in the oven until it begins to smoke and then take it out or turn the oven off and repeat that a few times. That's absolutely correct. And also an even better way to season your cast iron is to cook with it. So if you're cooking often with your cast iron, 
foods that have oils in them, the oil will seep into the surfaces and you will be using your spatula to scrape it flat. Um, and, and as long as you uh, care for your cast iron properly at the end of each cooking session, that's the best way to have well seasoned, nice and slick nonstick cast iron. Nick is going to show you after breakfast how we clean up our cast iron each time we use it. All right, so I'm going to show you how we clean our cast iron. Uh, I did pancakes this morning, so there's oil and pancake crud in there. Not the worst thing to have to clean up. Um, I use uh, this, which was uh, from a broken spatula, so not everybody has access to this, but it's just a little metal scraper, and I use it to, to move all the stuff off of there. Um, it's not that different from these that are commercially available. We also have a couple of these and it's just a plastic version So it's got some different shapes to it so you can get into the corners and stuff. These are really good, too um, I just uh, I prefer this because well, we've had it for a long time and it's a little bigger uh, So you just, you're just a little careful. You don't really dig at it at all Move all this stuff around. You get as much of that out of there as you can lift out of there. And then you feed it to your dog. <laughs> or put in your compost or whatever you do with food scraps. Then I use paper napkins or paper towels. And just give it a wipe down. Get the last of the food out of there. And then I turn on the heat. I let it get good and hot, um, just to the point where the uh, pan starts to smoke a little bit. That's telling me that the that the grease that I put in there um, from cooking is starting to reach the smoke point, and the smoke point is what uh, turns the fats into essentially a solid that coats your pan. Um, so I do that every every single time uh, that I use it. I do that much of it, and then every other day or so, I will put in uh, at this point in the process just a little squirt of flax oil. And this oil it just um, it's a real uh, high fat oil, and um, uh, it's high in omega three fatty acids, and that just builds that layer faster than using like vegetable oil or olive oil or any of the others. So you bring it up to the point where it's just going to start smoking a little bit. You don't want to let it smoke for too long because you're going to lose all of that um, all of that seasoning, but you want to bring the oil up to the to the point that it does smoke and then shut it off. So we don't wash these um, with which has been really convenient when we've been in sort of low water use situations like we have been in the last couple of years. Um, but the water and especially dish soap breaks down the oil, which is what makes cast iron work. You know, that it has a coat of oil on the, um, that it has a coat of oil on it at all times. And it's not just oily, it's the baked on oil. So the dish soap will break that down and make your cast iron less nonstick. It's generally not advised to use soap very often. Um, the, the soap doesn't particularly attack the cast iron, but when you're trying to build up a layer of solidified or polymerized fat, um, then you certainly don't want your soap to be attacking it every day or you're working against your own method there. So if you're, if you're worried about something that you can't use dish soap on not being disinfected, the heat is what does your disinfecting for you. My sister washes her cast iron with water every time she uses it and occasionally with soap and she still has great cast iron. It might not have quite as thick of a sheen on it as mine does, but it's not really a point of comparison. She's able to use cast iron in that way in a kind of ordinary kitchen where she has plenty of access to water and she doesn't want that um, the any any darkness or char on any of her nice things. 
we became very accustomed to the presence of char when we were cooking entirely on open propane and a wood stove and it didn't bother us a bit to have a little char on our on the outside obviously not the food but on the outside of our cast iron but cast iron works just as well in a, a very clean um, indoor kitchen as well we're making that transition right now that's my daily routine on cast iron.